summer are here, my friends. We have so many blush and bronzer launches from some of our favorite luxury brands. Natasha Denona is launching an interesting new face palette and one of the hottest luxury brands in the world is launching a cosmetics line. Is it a cash grab? Is it legit? Let's discuss and keep watching. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to what is new in luxury beauty, my fortnightly episode here on this channel where we talk about the hottest, the newest, the tastiest and most tempting new makeup of releases in luxury beauty and any other relevant industry news. We have a lot to catch up on today, so please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And real quick, friends, before we get into it, I do just want to call out that I just moved into a new filming space. I just moved to a new city, Dallas, Texas, new apartment, all that good stuff. It's going quite well, but I am working on the audio and the lighting, so if anything seems a little bit off, bear with me, guys. It is a work in progress, but I do have this new cozy chair so we can get comfy together. We can talk about new makeup chill. So grab a cup of tea, a glass of wine, get comfy because we're getting into it right now. Let's kick things off with Chanel, starting off with their spring and summer 2024 collection, which surprise, surprise, it's got kind of like a beachy summer theme. I mean, it is a summer collection, so I'm into it. We have a lot of neutrals, but also some pops of color. The two most popular products in the collection are definitely the two eyeshadow palettes, especially this one, which is called Ravage. This is going to have neutrals with a pop of blue. One of the neutrals there is kind of like a shimmering white, so it kind of adds like a nice contrast, but it definitely kind of gives you that sand and beach type of a vibe. I think that's what they're going for for this. Definitely like neutrals with a pop of color. That is usually what I get out of my favorite palettes, but we also have another palette here called Coral Treasure. Spoiler, this is what I have on my eyes today, so you guys get a little sneak peek of the review that I'm going to be doing of this collection. Both of the palettes look absolutely gorgeous. I am I'm still testing them guys. So of course in my review, stay tuned, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see that. I will tell you kind of like the pros and cons and make sure you comment down below and let me know now what kinds of comparisons you wanna see with both of these palettes. But they seem to be very, very popular. I'm gonna be linking all these products down below, by the way, I do use affiliate links. So if you've dropped through my links, it does support my channel. Anything that's available, it's all gonna be linked down below along with the social media accounts that I'm referencing today. Also in this collection, we have the Lumiere de l'Ocean. Excuse me for my pronunciation, guys. This is going to be a highlighter. What I will tell you right now is that while the tone and the reflect of this highlighter is extremely beautiful, it is very glittery. Like it's mostly glitter, guys. So if you don't want something that is straight up glitter, if you don't kind of want to use this as like a topper for your eyes, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to save you the money. Do not buy this highlighter or luminizer, whatever Chanel calls it. I'm just calling that out. We also have the Roses Coquillage, the powder blush duo, and that is basically going to be a blush duo with a corally orange and then kind of like a summertime rose, like a warmer rose. I actually have it on my cheeks today, so you guys once again get a little bit of a sneak peek there. But in addition to that, we also have two of the Rouge Coco Balms. We have Coraline and we also have Anemone. That is what I'm wearing on my lips today. We also have two of the nail varnishes in like a peach and a blue. Two of the Rouge Allure Lacquers in Seashell and Sea Star. Seashell is going to be more of like the nude option. So if you want something very neutral, very everyday, go with that one. But Sea Star, that one is gorgeous. If you want a beautiful summertime red, it's kind of like a corally red. We also have the Mermaid Glow Highlighter Stick. I don't usually like the highlighter sticks much from Chanel, so I'm not going to be getting that. And then finally, guys, we all also have the Blue Abyss eyeliner, which I'm also excited to try out. The eyeliners from Chanel are my favorite eyeliners. They are so, so good. So if you wanted to try a colorful eyeliner, if you need something that is very long wearing, but also very easy to use and to apply, I really do recommend the eyeliner. So overall, guys, what do I think of this collection? Without testing it yet, okay, because there will be a review, but just the concept, I think it's beautiful. I like that they did some Something that kind of gives a mix of both neutrals and colors depending on the direction that somebody wants to go. I am very curious about the pigmentation of all of the shades, right? Because a lot of the blushes and eyeshadows that we see from Chanel, while I do appreciate something very soft, I'm curious to see if these are going to work on all skin tones. But I really like the fact that they're playing up textures, like 
different textures, adding in some fun toppers in addition to colors in this collection. It feels very fun for the summertime. Some people are not going into summer right now. I realize you're going into winter, but hopefully you still have a little summer right now so that everybody can enjoy this during the season that it is intended for. But in general, guys, I'm so, so excited to review this for you. And I bought pretty much everything, both of the eyeshadow palettes, one of the Baums, the one that I'm wearing, both of the liquid lipsticks, the highlighter, the blush, and the blue abyss eyeliner. So stay tuned for that review. Next up, friends, we have an interesting new release from Natasha Denona. She's coming out with a new face and eye palette. This is called the Hyper Natural Face Palette. And she's launched this format before. I believe it was two years ago, she came out with the Glam Face and Eye Palette. And then last year, I wanna say she came out with kind of like a Valentine's theme one that was more of like pink and purple. Now she is back with a new version and she's also trying to launch what it seems like some new and different formulas to try and intrigue us into buying more from her brand. So what do we have going on here, guys? First, we have five eyeshadow pans all there along the bottom. And this is supposed to be supposedly a new formula. It says this is the Hyper Silk Powder Gel Formula infused with hydrating ingredients like Phytosqualane 3 Vita Boticetum. I cannot pronounce these names, guys. And I'm usually able to pronounce most of the things. I cannot pronounce these. I don't know what these ingredients are. But it seems like what Natasha Denona is trying to do is she's trying to kind of create almost like a sub brand like she's done with glam like she's done with retro for example and she's trying to make this more of like the skincare infused makeup line and she uses the high the hi dash whatever to create new products that are a part of that line so we're supposed to see that and we're supposed to associate that with like moisturization skincare ingredients etc i think it's really interesting because natasha denona is known more for like eyeshadow palettes but she's really trying to bring in some type of differentiation. And for me, I kind of roll my eyes, but also I got to give her credit for trying. So comment down below, let me know if you care. But I do like moisturizing eyeshadows. I love the Clay de Peau ones, for example. What else do we have in this palette though, guys? We also have a bronze and contour pan. And what she's done here is very interesting. And I think it's a very good tactic to keep us engaged with what she's launching. She has not just one shade of bronzer. Oh no, because then she would have to create like three, four, or five different palettes to suit all of our skin tones, or at least a, a decent amount of skin tones. She has three different stripes of pigment there for us to mix. Apparently we're supposed to be our own makeup artists and we're supposed to mix up our perfect color from those three little pans. And this also is supposed to be what I think is a new formula. It says the High Tech Creamy Powder Bronzer and Contour Trio. And then here she has also done the same with the blushes. So we have kind of like a light pink blush and then a deeper, rosier blush. And I guess this is supposed to also be moisturizing for your face. I have found most of the blushes in these Natasha Denona palettes the creamier ones that they dry out after a couple of months. I don't get that when she launches them in like their separate palettes, but in these types of palettes, I have find that they do dry out over time. So just kind of buyer beware guys, like we won't know until we try it, but just buyer beware. But anyway, what do I think of this palette? I think that it is very smart from a marketing perspective. Like I said, she's trying to bring something a little bit new to her formulations because a lot of people that have Natasha Nona palettes, like we already have all of these colors so we always want to know like, what's the new type of formula that she is launching I appreciate the effort I appreciate that she's trying to like push it and constantly be delivering something new but for me it's at least in this palette it's not really enough here's what I think about this palette guys I feel like in an effort to make this be everything like an everything palette it really doesn't have any theme and when it comes to Natasha Denona I like to feel inspired I like to feel a little bit more artistic I know that she's trying to take a lot of her products and she's trying to make them a little bit more mainstream because the mainstream customer usually just wants something that's like every day that can work you know for a lot of different types of looks going to work during the day that kind of a thing 
But personally for me, guys, I like the Natasha Denona palettes that are a little bit more inspirational. I like the Sunrise palette. I like the Love palette. I like the Yucca palette. I like the more, not even necessarily colorful ones, but the ones where if I want a certain look, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna grab that palette and I'm gonna have so much fun creating that look. I look at this and I'm kind of like, I don't see it. I don't understand what look I'm getting from this. Like I'm putting a little bit of bronzer in the crease and then I'm tossing one of these shimmer shades on. On. I don't like the blush. I kind of wish that, you know, if it was a hyper natural face palette that she had included a neutral blush or something that was a little bit more, I don't know, like on the browner peachier side. And then maybe the other one was kind of more rose. I don't really like the fact that they're pink. I don't like the fact that I have to like mix up my own bronzer shade. And I know that a lot of people, they're like, oh, it's really great for travel. But like, how many travel palettes do I actually need? You know what's great for travel? A mini bronzer, a single blush, which I already have in my makeup collection, and one of the many, mini Natasha Denona five pan palettes that I already don't really use. Like all of those are good for travel. I really don't need this to be like a seven in one. It's not really inspirational at all, but I'm really interested to see if this sells, guys, because it is a cute palette. I don't wanna knock it. I like the fact that she is trying out new ingredients. She's trying out new formulas because, hey, you got to test things out. That's kind of like how you innovate, how you get better. But like I said, I just don't like the overall format of it. And I'm just concerned about like the bronzer still not suiting a lot of skin tones or it not really being the right undertone for its purpose. So comment down below. I am so interested in this launch. I think it's a really, really interesting product. It's not going to be for me. I'm not going to be getting it. I'm not going to be reviewing it, but I probably will watch a lot of reviews because I'm very curious. I am constantly curious to see Natasha Denona try new things. And she is one of the luxury makeup artist brands out there that I think still does a decent job of coming out with both neutral things that suit the everyday consumer, but also she still does make colorful fun palettes for people like me that want to be a little bit more artistic. So please comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. I'm dying to know your thoughts. And yeah, by the way, if you are new, here. Hi, welcome. My name is Sophia and I love luxury beauty and fashion. I help you shop for expensive things. I spend my money so that you don't have to and I do lots of new makeup reviews. So if you love luxury beauty, you're definitely in the right place, my friend. Hit that subscribe button to join our fam. We would love to have you. And with that, let's get back to the rest of this episode. Speaking of bronzers, we have to talk about all of the new bronzers and blushes that are launching from our favorite luxury brands. This is usually around the time of year where we see these types of releases kind of going into spring in the Northern Hemisphere. Sphere, and I want to kick things off for the bronzers that I'm the most excited about. Well, I don't know. I'm excited for all of these, but we're going to start off with a really good one, okay? <laughs> these are from Dior. These are already available, I know, in the UK, and I think in most European countries. I am waiting, friends, for these to launch in the US. These are the Dior Forever Natural Bronze Glow, and these apparently are limited edition. There's only four shades, which I'm not very happy about, but it's limited edition, so maybe that's why they didn't expand these to the full range. It is something that Dior certainly needs to work on. And basically what we're getting here is a mix between a satiny bronzing powder, a matte sculpting powder, and a vibrant blush and illuminating powder infused with flashes of gold like rays of sunlight. That's what it says on the Dior website, okay? So basically it's a glowy bronzer with a little tint from the blush. And depending on where you put your brush, you know, you can get a little bit more blush if you want to do bronze all over the face or the hollows of the cheeks or something and then a little bit more of like a blushy tone on the cheeks you also can use this kind of like an eyeshadow palette which would be even easier to do because you have a smaller brush to kind of pick and choose the colors that you want the embossing on here while i know it's gonna wear off really quickly is super duper beautiful and the packaging ugh, when i saw these sneak peek i didn't realize that it was going to be basically the i don't think it's raffia but the embroidered canache pattern that they have on their summer handbags I love the packaging. I really hope that it doesn't get dirty with a bunch of bronzer. Overall, I think that these look beautiful. I do have a couple of concerns though that I don't know. I just want to share with you guys. I will be purchasing as soon as I can get them like at least one or two of these to review. My concerns are number one, are these going to be like super warm because the tones look very warm and I know that a lot of us were looking for something a little bit more neutral, maybe even leaning a little bit cool tone. I already talked about the shade range. This is isn't a great shade range, but also I'm curious, what is gonna be the difference between the 
pink toned ones and the peachy toned ones. These remind me a lot of the ones from Guerlain. I'll put an image up here referencing the ones I'm talking about. I have a full review of these on my channel. They're some of my favorite bronzers. Love them. These look like a very similar concept. So is it the same thing? Are they better? We need to find out. So I will be doing a review of these. Also, if you guys are familiar with the regular Dior Forever bronzers, I will just call out the fact that those bronzers, while I like them, you do need to know that they are more of a natural finish. They're not as pigmented and intentionally so. It's supposed to be the kind of thing that you can't really overdo. It's supposed to give you more of like a natural tan type of look. So I do think that this, you know, mixing it with the blush makes a lot of sense. It's basically the same concept that Guerlain has with their bronzers as well. But yeah, overall guys, I have some concerns. I'm concerned about the shades, the tones, the range, but they do look really beautiful and I am really excited to try these out. So comment down below. Let me know if you're interested in these as well. I'm going to hopefully include these if Dior comes out with any other more like summertime themed makeup in a review alongside that. We also have been blessed with new bronzers from YSL. So a lot of you guys know YSL came out with the little mini couture clutch eyeshadow palettes last year, which so many of us love. They were some of my favorite eyeshadow palettes that were launched last year. One of my favorite launches last year in general. And and they have come out now with bronzers that come in a very similar packaging, except the packaging is bronze. It's like a brown color because get it, it's a bronzer. <laughs> I see what you're doing there, YSL. These look divine, okay? Do I want the delicious, creamy, buttery texture of the eyeshadows bronzed all over my face? Yes, I do. I'm really hoping that these are good. I actually just ordered one of these, the lightest shade today. I saw that they popped up on Selfridges, so I'll have that link down below. I do think that these are gonna show up at other retailers. So if you live in the US, you don't really need to purchase from Selfridges. I'm sure that these are gonna be launching elsewhere. It's probably gonna take a little while for them to show up at like Sephora and maybe Nordstrom, but we'll see guys. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, by the way. I'll link my handle down below because that's where I let you guys know when these things launch first. Be subscribed to me if you don't have Instagram because I post on the community page as well. But yeah, these are launching. I'm very excited. I already picked one up and I have a feeling that they're going to be very good. But I guess the question is, what are these going to be similar to? My guess would be probably in formula, probably like the Gucci ones because those have kind of like a buttery feel to them. But we're just going to have to see. And then the last bronzer release, at least for this episode, are these new cloud paints from Glossier. And these are basically like the bronzer version of the cloud paints. I honestly don't know what took them so long to launch these. This sounds like a very logical extension of the cloud paint line. Did they have another product that was a bronzer before? I don't remember. There have been so many trends when it comes to cream products. I'm really surprised that they're launching this now. I'm still interested. I'm still intrigued. Don't get me wrong because I actually really like the cloud paints. I had these in my cream blush ranking video and to say that they're ranked very, very high. I have them in every single shade. I love them. So I'm actually interested in these, but I think I will probably go in store to see what color I am because there's five different shades here and the lightest color is very light. I almost feel like that would blend into nothing. Has anybody tried these? Comment down below and let me know. I know that five shades is not a lot of shades, but actually when you go on some Sephora, five shades is a lot compared to most brands, which is a little bit sad. I think NARS has the most and they have eight shades. So the shades could be improved, but this is technically standard based off what we see at a lot of other retailers. So let me know what you think of these. I'm interested, but I'm not going to be running out to get them immediately. Moving over to blushes. You guys probably already saw the launch of the new Dior Forever Glow Maximizers. These are kind of like the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wands. They're basically like a liquid luminizer. So you can use these on the cheeks. You can use them as like a glowy blush, a highlighter. You can use them on your eyes. These are now available and I believe they come in, yes, six different shades. We have pearly pink, gold, rosy, peachy, and bronze. I already reviewed these for you guys. The review is live on my channel right now. And I have the pink, the rosy, and the bronze shades. They're all really beautiful, but the one that I like the most is surprise, surprise, the bronze. Cause you guys know I love kind of like that warm tone toasty, bronzy type of look. Looks really nice paired with other 
cream bronzers kind of as like a bronzer topper or just on its own if you want more like a minimal type of look. They're really nice. They're really hydrating. They're really great if you want a bit of glow, but nothing like glittery or sparkly. So those are now available to all countries, I think. So I will have that link down below. Dior also came out with the Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. And this kind of reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter. So basically kind of a similar product to that. And they came out with this in a bunch of different shades. Pretty much every luxury brand has one of these at this point. It's really interesting to see Dior launching cream and liquid products just now. You know, we already talked about Glossier just a second ago. They've been doing that for a really long time. Those cloud paints went viral so, so long ago. Like we've seen this trend of cream and liquid products and Dior is just now kind of like getting on the bandwagon. So I think that that's pretty interesting but you know what I'm here for it so now they have this kind of glowy primer mixer type of product I did not pick this up guys just because I have so many of them in my makeup drawer right now so I encourage you to do the same go through your makeup drawer even maybe do a beginning of the year declutter if you haven't already and just kind of check out and see what you have because you probably already have a product like this so yeah it comes in seven different shades it looks like and it is available right now now let's talk about a release that I feel like so many of us have been waiting for for several years now. Guerlain is coming out with blushes, terracotta blushes. We already talked about the bronzer earlier in this episode. And finally, we are getting blushes. I feel like this is, once again, like what are these brands doing? Like, come on, we've wanted these blushes. Imagine blushes in your makeup lineup. Anyway, maybe they had some old ones and they discontinued them and I'm just not knowledgeable. So you guys will let me know down in the comments. But anyway, the brand is coming out with six terracotta blushes and these look so beautiful. A lot of you guys, I asked you on the community page what you thought, and a lot of you guys said that you didn't think that they look great, but then the other half of you said that you were just a sucker for Guerlain and you were very excited. I love their bronzers. I really like pretty much most of their products. I feel like they do a really great job. A lot of them are favorites in my collection. So as soon as they launch blushes, I have to pay attention. I hope that these have a really nice silky feel. I'm hoping that they have more of like a demi matte finish because I know with the terracotta brand, usually it's more of a matte finish. It does depend on which bronzer you pick. They have different formulations. I don't even care what people say. I'm excited about this, all right? And guess what, guys? I already purchased all of the shades yesterday, so they are on their way to me. Hopefully I'll get them like today or tomorrow. I will be doing a review and I will let you know. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Are they fantastic blushes or are they just like the same thing that we've seen already. I'm already thinking of some potential comparisons or maybe dupes for these. So let me know what kind of comparisons do you wanna see and I will make sure to include that in the review. The new blush launch that I feel like I've been hearing the most about on social media, however, are these three new blush duos from Patrick Ta. There is one thing certain in this world and that is Patrick Ta will be launching more shades of the blush duos <laughs> depending on the season. And I can see why people are excited about these because they are very beautiful spring colors. So we have a peachy one that I think is called She's the Most Moment. We also have one that's called Not Too Much, which is a really beautiful neutral one. I think that is the one that probably is going to be the most popular. And then there's also a beautiful kind of blossom, almost like a pale bubblegum pink that is called Just Enough. These shades are really nice. They're really subtle. If you want something that's a little bit more natural, I do like that Patrick Todd that he comes out with like really pigmented ones, which I do have several of those, but he also comes out with some that are a little bit more subtle. So I think it's good that he's launching more in kind of a range of tones. That being said, I'm not tempted by these guys. I just did my declutter before I moved. And I'm not going to lie, I had some Patrick Ta blush dudes that I forgot that I <laughs> forgot that I had. So I kept the ones that I liked the most, but I did just throw away some of the older ones. I'm just not going to use up that much blush. I would have to use it literally every day to get through one of these. You do get a lot of product. I think it's a really good value. So if the Guerlain ones or some of the other luxury ones are just like out of your price range, I do think that this is an incredible value. So I get why people are excited. And I actually think it's a really beautiful release. But for me, I'm just saying no to it. Like I already know that I didn't use the ones that I had before. And I just got the ones from Guerlain. So for me, this is going to be 
a pass. I feel like I've been very chatty this episode, so forgive me, guys. I feel like this is going to be a long one, but bear with me because I have a couple more things that I'm excited about that I want to share with you. The next thing is something that stopped me in my feed because I love the other version of this new product. This is a new release from Merit, and this is their new signature lip lightweight matte lipstick. So I love the signature lightweight lipsticks. I love all the colors. I have several that are some of my go-tos. It's a really kind of comfortable formula, but still pigmented. And it looks like they're coming out with a matte version. I see a lot of brands coming out with matte lipsticks lately, which is why I did the matte velvet lipstick ranking video for you guys. If you want to hear some of my favorites, at least in like the luxury category, I can link that down below. So I am on like a a velvet matte kick right now. And these look so delightful. They are $26. And actually, these are going to be available this week on the 22nd. So by the time this video is live, these are going to be live. Let's take a look at some of these colors. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to have to get mm, definitely Maison. That one looks gorgeous. They always nail the colors. They're like very sophisticated. So yeah, I just wanted to call these to your attention, guys. If you're looking for like a nice new matte lipstick, this might be something you want to put on your radar. I'm probably going to order maybe like one or two and put it in a trying new makeup video, but They've got me hooked on their lipsticks, guys. They have really, really good lip products. And then the other new lipstick launch that you need to have on your radar are these new slim lipsticks from Tom Ford. These are going to have a satin finish and they come in 10 shades. I'll show you right here on the Chic Profile Instagram page, all of the swatches. And I'm kind of happy that we have some nice like neutral colors in here because when they launched there was the liquid lipsticks. It was a lot of reds were not seeing like as much of a range in the tones that Tom Ford offers. So I'm excited to see these. I haven't picked these up. I think that they're available. I'm going to find out where and I'll put that in the description box for you guys. But I actually am really intrigued because when I did my lipstick ranking for you all that I just mentioned a second ago, I realized that the Tom Ford lipsticks have some very impressive ingredients. Yes, they are very expensive, but the ingredients are definitely superior to a lot of the other ones, even the other like expensive ones that we see on the market. So I would very much be interested in kind of like an everyday satin lipstick from Tom Ford. I don't mind paying the $50 if it's something that's really good with good ingredients that nourishes my lips that I can kind of keep in my purse and use every day. So yeah, I think the colors are beautiful. I just haven't gotten a chance to look into these and pick them up yet, but I would love to know. Comment down below if you have these already. Are they good? Should I spend my money on them? Them. If you guys are interested in them, you know I will pick them up and I will let you know how they are. And then I thought I would end this episode, friends, with a little piece of juicy industry news. By the way, make sure you're tagging me on Instagram in any kind of like industry news, trends, things that you see going on that you want me to comment on in these videos. I am trying to add a little bit more like news aspect to this for us to kind of discuss different types of topics in addition to all of the awesome products that are going to be launching very, very soon. So make sure you tag me on anything that you think would be worth including. And what I wanted to discuss today is that Miu Miu, which is one of the hottest luxury brands, one of the top three consistently over the past couple of orders, is looking to launch a cosmetics line, which I thought was very, very interesting. A lot of luxury brands, they have fragrances. That's pretty typical. And those are usually licensed out to a cosmetics company. The same is often done for sunglasses, sometimes for jewelry and other types of accessories. And basically that company will produce the products on behalf of the luxury brand, et cetera, et cetera. And so Miu Miu is looking to actually come out, it looks like, with a color cosmetics line. And if you guys don't know this, Miu Miu is actually a part of the Prada group. Miu Miu is the nickname of Mucha Prada, who is tied to Prada, obviously. That is her last name. So with the launch of Prada Beauty, which has been very, very successful, Miu Miu now wants to partner once again with L'Oreal, who they partnered with for the launch of Prada of beauty to launch basically something similar for Miu Miu. So I would love to hear your thoughts about this. I know some people when they hear that these brands are coming out with cosmetics companies, they kind of think, mm, 
home. Maybe this is a little bit of a cash grab or are they jumping on a trend here? But I actually think this makes a lot of sense. Like I said, it is one of the hottest brands in the world, one of the hottest luxury brands in the world, at least over the past couple of quarters, along with Rada. They're, <laughs> they're having a good year. And also Loewe and a couple of other, you know, brands that keep popping up in popularity. So I think it makes sense that they're wanting to kind of capitalize off of their success recently with a beauty line. I don't really think this is a cash grab, guys, because Prada Beauty, it seems like it was very well thought out. It looks like a lot of thought and design went into making the products. The formulations are top notch. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take the Miu Miu Beauty line to come out, but I think it's really interesting. I think it makes a lot of sense and I'm actually really excited for it. I definitely think that it could have a presence in the luxury beauty community, the luxury beauty industry, but I would love to hear all of your thoughts. Miu Miu also has a pretty different vibe from Prada. Like Prada, I feel like is a little bit sleeker, it's a little bit more edgy, a little bit more modern, whereas Miu Miu is a little bit more like curly, sometimes borderline kitschy. So I feel like they could have a lot of fun with it and the two makeup brands could look completely different and also serve maybe completely different customers with different aesthetics. Some of you guys told me that the Prada packaging to you looked a little bit too masculine or just, I don't know, not feminine, not girly enough for you. So Miu Miu Beauty might be your cup of tea. I thought that was really interesting. I wanted to hear all of your thoughts. I don't think it's a cash grab. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant idea. I love Prada Beauty so far, but hey, your opinion is worth just as much as mine, friends. And with that, I urge you to sound off in the comment section down below. Let me know about what you think about Miu Miu Beauty. What do you think about all the new releases coming out? You need to let me know if you like this episode. Please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye. Bye.